Hey friends and welcome back to Sewing From Scratch. I am Kate and this is where I teach you everything I know about sewing and we learn more together along the way. Today I'm sharing what I made in the month of September as well as maybe a little bit of a life update and glimpse into my October. every one of you who participated in Shelf Sewing September. This is a crazy month for so many of us and I just like to take it as a reason to to slow down and something to like ground to maybe if you will and just keep reminding ourselves like we don't need to be rushing through things. We don't need to be purchasing things. We have so much to be grateful for, thankful for right in front of us. Let's use what we have on hand to get some of those things off of our to-do list, clear up some mental space, and just fall back in love with sewing. So that is what I focus on in September. So I really didn't make a whole lot. I was focused on my sewing room. I was focused on keeping things moving, although I would have liked to, of course, do more for shelf sewing September. And that's just how it always goes. I was very busy and still am very busy with some freelance work that I'm wrapping up, but I did have time for some very fun and important projects. The first things I made in the month of September was a freelance project, and that's two pairs of these joggers. And this is a pattern from Pattern Niche that I hacked and did a video on, so I will link that down below. These are the Karita joggers. They're actually marketed as a girl's pair, but I made my son this pair with the pin tucks, and I did a little bit of color blocking with the burgundy, and then I added a cute little back patch pocket. I reduced the waistband so that it doesn't have the yoga waistband that it, the pattern comes with, and then I added elastic in there as well. And I think that's all I hacked on his pair. And then my daughter's pair. This is another pair of Karita joggers. Again, I reduced the waistband because the yoga waistband just isn't, I don't think it's something that they would enjoy. I haven't tried it, but maybe they would. I just was doing a hack this time. So I did the same kind of waistband hack. And then I added a stripe down the side of the leg. This normally is like pretty straightforward. You just pick a, you know, reduce the back, reduce the front, add a strip in the center. But because of this pocket, it was challenging. And it wasn't something that I'm ready to make a tutorial on because it was, it's not perfect and it's not, not even that it's not perfect, but it's not like, there's no real technique to it. It was just kind of like put things here and sew them, <laughs> which is a lot of hacking, I know, but that's kind of how it turned out. And I'm really happy with it. You know, they're great for joggers. And then the other hack I did on these was I made it an elastic cuff on the leg instead of having a separate fabric cuff piece. So all I did was omit the cuff piece and then I extended the, the leg by one inch so that I could fold it up by one inch. And then I just added in some elastic in there and they are super cute, super cozy. She loves them, wears them, and I don't know what else I have to say about them. But I will link that video down below if you're interested on some more ideas for hacking the Karita joggers. Okay, then I made some things for my sewing room. I will link this video down below if you haven't seen it yet. But this was a prompt for Shelf Sewing September. Kind of one of those things that was like something that you're excited to make, as well as something you've been putting off or, you know, that's what the whole month is about. So I chose to sew for my sewing room because these are things that I've been meaning to make for a long time. I've been excited to make them and I've been putting them off because I just kept saying, well, I'll wait until my sewing room's done. But why? Why won't I just do it now? So I did. So what I made was this pressing mat. It's wool, it's six layers of fabric here, um, three wool and three that I thought were wool but actually are melty. So I don't know what they are. Uh, but you can watch the whole video to find out more about that. I also made these two pressing hams, so the ham and then the sleeve roll or the sausage. These are a free pattern from Twig and Tail, so I will link that below as well as the video because they're all one video. Um, this one I filled with sawdust and then this one I filled with fabric scraps. So I haven't used them a ton yet, so it's hard to tell which one I think would be my favorite. I, I will say I could have used a little tiny bit more sawdust for this one, like it is 
it is squishy still, a little bit squishy. No, you know, not terrible, but it's, I could use a little bit more. And then this one, I, you'll see in the video, I have to, I had to sift, it was a whole thing. And I didn't have enough to do both. So that's why this one's filled with scraps. And then in that same video, I made this cute little fabric scrap buster uh, thread catcher kind of thing. So the idea is that I snip threads and I put them in here because I didn't have anything like right by my pressing mat. And that's where I do a lot of my snipping. So this just made sense just to have it so close by. I was always just throwing things into my serger catch and I don't know. I just wanted to have something like this. So it's been working good. I, you know, it, I move it around, which is handy but it's also like is it in the way like I don't even know but I do like having it and it's useful and I mean if one day I decide not to have it then I can pass it on to somebody else this was also a free pattern that I found on Pinterest so I will link that below and it's also in the video with the pressing mat and the ham and sausage all right and then this was the most special project of the month my kids and I didn't have well and my husband don't have orange shirts or didn't have orange shirts for orange shirt day and if you follow me on Instagram you might have noticed that this is kind of something that's important to me I am not indigenous I am a descendant of settlers European settlers but it's still very important to me and it's very important to me that my kids learn about the history so we do a lot of reading and talking about residential schools and and all of the things that go along with that so it was very important to me that we have orange shirts and I don't know why I didn't, we didn't have any before but we I definitely made an effort to purchase the fabric so I did that in in August because I wasn't buying in September um, so I purchased this fabric from simplify fabric and then the decal on it the design is from my friend Lindsay Cossidy and I have a whole video making these shirts that all the proceeds actually go to charity to residential school survivor funds so I will link that below that's like a very important thing like all that money donated on a monthly basis it's it's not a lot because I don't have you know hundreds of thousands of viewers but everything helps right so I do encourage you to go and watch it and share with your friends and family it's just really important and I want to get that message out there and do what I can to help because that's how we ensure things don't happen again in the future and that's how we we repair those connections and we just learn and grow and it's really important so I did make this this is a bamboo fabric again from simplify and then the design is from Lindsay and it, it's every time I look at it I get goosebumps it's really emotional to to think of what went into this I think Lindsay would probably still be open to selling her design um, she was she was selling it uh, you could pay her five dollars per for the file. All of that money was being donated to one of the efforts in her community. I, so I do highly, highly recommend this. There are also some designs on Etsy, but I don't know the authenticity of them. And I'm hesitant to, to just purchase them without knowing more or even recommend them. So if you are gonna look into that, just maybe just message the shop and you know ask even ask like the meaning behind it or something like that so that you know that the person making it is doing it for the right reasons and and that it's not cultural appropriation or or you know somebody trying to make a buck off of the trauma of others all right and then i started a project that i'm not going to show you because it's not done and i don't want to finish it till next month so i'm going to be working on it in october been working I worked on it a little bit it's pretty straightforward so uh, yeah you'll see it in October <laughs> and then I made some socks so again this is a video up on my channel and I will link that below but I upcycled an old sweater and I made four pairs of ankle socks so I use the let's go sock it's a Swedish pattern and I will link it below of course and that's what I made I, I uh, I did adapt it a little tiny bit, but honestly not too much. There is the free Ellie and Mac Sew It Forward socks that you can check out if you don't want to spend money. This I think this sock pattern was like $7, $9, somewhere around there, but the Ellie and Mac version is free. The only thing with it is there's only one height. So the Let's Go I think has like four different heights. 
calf heights and then the sew it forward socks have just the one it just comes as one so I mean that's fine or you could easily hack it if you're interested in how to do that I was thinking of making a video on it anyway so let me know but yeah socks they're great I really don't wear socks but I did need a couple more pairs uh, especially for a reason that I don't know should I tell you right now or should I wait? I think I'm gonna wait there's a reason why I need more socks but anyway Four pairs of socks uh, to bulk up my sock drawer. I think I have a total of six pairs now of ankle socks, which is more than what I would really need. And the last thing I'm working on is a pair of Arden pants. Now I'm filming this video the, the second last day of September and I don't think they're gonna get done before I put this video up, but I am working on them. They'll, they'll be done, they'll be like in the works. So we'll see. We'll see when I put this video up and when I finish them, if you know, if it all works out. But I am working on a pair of Arden pants in some blue cotton that I got this summer from Fab Cycle. So if I am done them, then I'll show you right here. <laughs> so I didn't end up finishing my Arden pants until October 1st, but I did get this shirt done for my husband. This was to wear for Orange Shirt Day. So it is the Seamwork Paxson Raglan sweatshirt and I used a light jersey fabric for it. So it's the Raglan sleeves and then it has the cuffs and it normally has a cuff to bottom as well but I just extended the length and hemmed it. Okay, so now for October. October, I'm gonna be focusing on the, we're starting a bra making series. And so it's gonna be kind of everything about that. And then I'm also going to be focusing on a big project. Now I put this out on my Instagram. Do you wanna see a coat or do you wanna see jeans first? Or which should I make sure first? I'm not even sure I'm gonna be sharing the process, but which should I make first? And it was overwhelming how many of you chose coat. And I guess that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna make a coat. That is probably what I need more than jeans right now. But I'm gonna use some dead stock wool that I purchased uh, last summer, fall. And I don't know what pattern I'm gonna use. I'm between the Rumana, the By Hand London Rumana coat and the Itch to Stitch Lagan coat. So, they, I mean, at first glance they look a lot alike, but there are differences. So the lapel is different, the one buttons all the way up, the other one doesn't. And the biggest thing for me, I think, is the pockets. So I love to have my hands in my pockets. I almost always have my hands in my pockets when I'm, you know, out talking to somebody. But the Rumana ones, they're like patch pockets on the front and I love the look of them. I, that's just more like a dressier coat, but I feel like those pockets aren't as functional as the uh, lagging coat where they're inside in the side seams. So I don't know, that might be the determining factor. I do have enough fabric to make two, like different types of fabric. I think I can make both, but that's, you know, as a minimalist, it's not really my thing. So we'll see, we'll see what I end up with. And then if I do get through that because I want to do the fitting and I want to do it nice and properly, then I think I will start jeans. But I mean, October is also Halloween month, so we will have Halloween costumes. And there's also that project I mentioned that I had started that I need to finish. And there's one more thing that is going to be affecting my October sewing and that is this pretty little girl. So we adopted this dog the other night and it was very, very spur of the moment. But as some of you may know, last year we lost our silver girl and we were really hesitant about getting another dog. And it's just, you know, it's easy not to have a dog. So we were hesitant and then this, this opportunity arose and she needed a home and uh, so we took her, we brought her home and she has been so, so, so good. And we're calling her Peggy and she needs a bed. So I'm going to use that opportunity to bust some scraps and make her a nice cozy bed for her to sleep on. So yeah, just a little bit of an update, kind of letting you know what's going on. My husband also needs, he's requested a long sleeve shirt, at least one. So we need to actually go through his drawers and see because he has a lot of long sleeve or short sleeve t-shirts and very few long sleeves so we gotta figure that out and I, I'll be making him at least one 
maybe more depending on how many he wants. And other than that, the Arden pants that I'm finishing, I might make a second pair of those. I do have an, another cut of fabric that I kind of was earmarking for Arden. So we'll see how that shakes out. But that's all I have to say and share. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you liked this video and gave it, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can see you in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.